is video number three. So this kind of explains the way that, you know, if you know that people need nutrients, you know the nutrients are based on certain amounts. There's, there's rangers or there's uh, threshold amounts to get enough. Starting in the 1990s, the federal government, the USDA, developed all these kind of terms, an EAR, an EER, an RDA, an AI, whatever. I can I can explain these or I can show you. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So if we go to the next slide, if you take any nutrient, and this is really vitamins and minerals mostly, you take any nutrient and you break those nutrients down by how much a person would need to, to let's say, stay healthy. And they actually did a lot of this work in animals, which is sad but true. The first thing you have to know is, what is the minimal amount of anything, a vitamin or a mineral, or, or I guess you could say a phytochemical, that would at least maintain some minimal health, whatever that would be. Your teeth don't fall out. Your bones don't break easily. And so you come up with what they call the EAR. It's the average amount that the average person would need to stay healthy. But that's an average person. Some people need more, some people need less. So you look at this big giant green bulb here. This is kind of a population of all the people in America for vitamin C, let's say. This example. Maybe the average American, regardless of gender, but they do break this down by gender and age and pregnancy and whatever, uh, needs 30 milligrams a day of vitamin C so they don't develop scurvy deficiency. Well, I mean, some mean some need more and some need less. So this starting in this, all this took place in the 50s and 60s and 70s. So what we developed was what you've heard of before, the RDA. The RDA is actually what we recommend not what the average person needs. And the RDA, is, if this is a bell curve of Americans, it's way out here. 30 might be the minimal need for vitamin C for like men and women. For women, it's 75 is the recommendation. And for men, it's 90. Professor, that's way more than the average person needs. Yeah, you're right. And so, so some vitamins and minerals, what we recommend is probably way more than you need. So when people get all focused in on, oh, I got to get 100% of everything every day. No, you probably don't. Um, vitamin C has a really high threshold in terms of toxicity. So you can allow, you can make a really big recommendation and you're going to be okay. For something like vitamin B3, you consume just a little bit too much and your skin breaks out in a, in a rash everywhere. So it depends on the vitamins or mineral that we're talking about. The EAR is the laboratory defined need. You'll never see that for any micronutrient. What you see in the back of the cereal box is an RDA, okay? For things we know about, for things we're, we're, we're certain of, iron, vitamin E. For some things we have to guess. Calcium is a guess. We really don't know how much you need. So whatever that number is in the back of a cereal box, it's not an RDA, it's called an AI, adequate intake. We think you need this amount. Iron, you're a young woman, you don't get enough iron at the age of 17, you will develop anemia in three months. We know how much to recommend for iron. For calcium and folate and a lot of other micronutrients, we're just guessing. Okay, every vitamin and mineral has an upper limit. You consume more than that, you could develop toxicity. Some go really high, like vitamin C. Some, like vitamin B3, you don't go that high and you develop toxicity. So that, that upper limit kind of varies from nutrient to nutrient. Those are the three things you're really going to worry about when it comes to this kind of how do you recommend an amount. Um, for carbohydrates, fat, and proteins, it's different. We actually, so in the, starting in the 1970s, they started surveying people using this giant national health ex, uh, and nutrition examination survey system where they would send vans around the country, measure people, ask them questions, and they came up with what they call the healthy ranges. They just said, look, all the folks we measured that were healthy tend to get 45 to 65 percent of their calories from carbohydrate. Some got more, some got less, but most people get about half their calories from carbs. We hope it's not sugar. And when it came to protein, in the beginning, it was 10 to 30 to 10 to 15 percent. But by the 1990s, 1995, yeah, healthy people can get up to 35 percent of their calories from protein. We hope it's not from bacon, but you know, everyone's a little different. And then when it came to fat, which is surprising because people worry about fat the most, healthy people tend to eat a solid amount of fat. 20 to 35 percent of their calories can come from fat. A third of all your calories can come from fat. 
and this is a really old slide from like the early 2000s. If I'm just going to home in on the Mediterranean diet. That's the all-time healthy diet. Look at the ranges for the Mediterranean diet. 46% of calories from fat. This isn't adding olive oil to your diet. This is waking up in the morning and doing an olive oil shot. Okay, I just think people underappreciate how fatty healthy diets are. The AHA diet, that's the American Heart Association diet, you know, the cardiologist diet is a 30, is, recommends 30% of your calories from fat. So for the macros, we have ranges. For the vitamins and minerals, we have these numbers that say, at least eat me every day, or on average, eat enough of me every day. Okay, that's that. How do you get people to eat better? Well, one thing you can do is you get these recommendations. People don't pay attention to recommendations. I don't, to be honest, and I teach the class. Um, you can also sneakily change the diet. So this occurred before I was ever born, before mo I, I think everyone in the class was ever born. We started fiddling with the American diet into the in the well before the 1940s, but primarily in the 1940s. When people came back from World War II, the diet of the, of the United States changed. You had 8 million people who were in uniform. They come back. They're looking for, for things like processed bread and white bread and pasta or macaroni, whatever they called it back then. And so because so many people were not eating their grandparents' diet from rural Nebraska, like white bread, they started adding nutrients back into food that were actually removed during processing. That's called enrichment. We actually enrich, enrich most of the flour sold in America, good old white bleached flour, is not just plain flour. It's flour that has stuff added back to it. Vitamins B1, B2, B3, folate, uh, folate and then the mineral iron. Most foods that you find, which are junky, kind of like crackers and cookies, it's not just flour, sugar, and water. It's flour that's been enriched. And then fortification started, this started 100 years ago, right? When, when you consume milk, cow's milk, and it says it's a good source of vitamin D, that's because somebody added it. Even maternal human milk is not a good source of vitamin D. That's fortification. When you add something from scratch, it was never there before, that's fortifying. When you add something that was removed during processing, that's enrichment. And a good way to look at the enrichment one is, you can skip this slide, is this. Imagine you're buying white bread, 1945, post-World War II. Here it is. It's made from flour that had all the good stuff removed low in fiber, low in zinc, magnesium, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B2, vitamin B1, vitamin B3. You can remove all the good stuff. So when they started enriching Wonder Bread, they started adding stuff back. That's the, that's the purple one. So there's plenty of iron in good old white bread today than there was. There's more iron in white bread today, 2024, than there was in 1947 or 46. Now, do they add everything back? Nope just five nutrients. They don't add B6. They don't add magnesium. They don't add zinc. They don't add fiber. They don't add other phytochemicals. What's the problem? It's still not as healthy as if you just ate whole wheat bread, whole grain bread. It's got all the other stuff in there that hasn't been removed. That's great. It costs about 25% more for whole wheat products. So we have rigged the food supply to make it cheaper to buy the least healthy food. We've tried to make that least healthy food slightly healthier by adding five things back to it, but we're not adding a lot of other things back to it. It's, kind of, it's a bit sad, but that's, that's the way it is. And then here's fortification. Orange juice with calcium. Sure, cal oranges have some calcium, not the same amount as milk. Uh, breads or soy milk that has vitamin B12. B12 is found in animal products. They get it from yeast. They add it into bread, they add it into breakfast cereal. That's fortification. Adding something that shouldn't even be there. Um, uh, yeah, and then milk with vitamin D. There's some milk in vitamin D, but not a lot. We add way more than normally would be in vitamin D milk. Uh, in milk. That's it for this video.